The Backyard Woodshop. Hi, welcome back to the Backyard Woodshop. I'm Tom Ryder. Today we've got a fun little project. We're making a yoga mat holder. The, my wife owns a fitness studio and we're just going to be uh, installing it up there. It's going to hold 12 yoga mats. This is a concept piece that I made just to make sure I had my angles and design correct before we started. It's just going to sit in there like that and like this. So if you want to see how I make it and see that finished product, stick around and I'll show you how. To get started, the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, get some wood, obviously. So for my purposes, I had one board and I ripped it down off camera just to speed this video up a little bit. And I ripped mine down to three and three eighths wide. The uh, home center sell it at three and a half inches wide, which is perfectly fine as well. It's just that the board that I ripped it off all these two pieces out of, that was the max yield I could get. Uh, if you're going to make a, the same project I am, you're going to need your board 75 inches long. If you're just making it for a couple mats, just adjust it for yourself. The other thing you're going to need is some dowel stock. This is three quarter inch poplar here. Um, I may go back and get three quarter inch oak just to make it all match. I haven't decided that yet. I had these on hand at the shop so I just kind of put them together. And your dowels are going to need to be six inches long and then you'll be uh, all set. So you can get eight, dowel, eight six inch long pieces out of one four foot dowel. So if you use a thin kerf blade that will work fantastic. Well, the next step is we're just laying out uh, our six inch on center uh, dowel holes. So basically I'm just measuring six inches from the top and then from then on I just got have my tape measure laid out and I just do six inch increments all the way down to the end. Uh, the top you start at six inches and then that will end with the bottom at three inches and that way it'll look, you know, three and six, it'll look pleasing. Um, the other thing you want to do is tape your boards or uh, clamp your boards together. That way when you make your six inch marks and you draw on your lines to mark out for your centers, you can just uh, transfer to the other board at the exact same time. Saves you a little bit of time. And then the other tip I've got is I like to uh, use painter's tape to mark my projects. This way you're not writing on the wood and you have to possibly sand it out later. Um, so you definitely want to mark the tops because uh, you don't want to invert this and, and make a mistake. I, I want the grain to run the same direction. And I've got my shop smith set up to drill the angled holes. They're 70 degrees from 90. So uh, the table set at 70 degrees. Uh, some people may call that 20 degrees. It all depends on your perspective, but since I'm going from 90 back, I'm calling it 70. Uh, on these two boards that are my guides on the side, they will keep the, the holes dead center of the board and let me slide it up. And So I've got two, two lines, one on each side, and then I've, I've got lines in the middle and that will let me um, consistently keep my spacing at six inches. So I've got my board sitting in here. It fits in nice and snug. I can just literally hold it. So I've got it lined up across my lines. the depth and then just slide it up and continue on with the same procedure. So I'll just continue on with that but I can pull this out real quick. As you can see you get some nice consistent holes now I have the shop smith set up uh, with the table at 90 degrees. I got my fence on there so that I can slide this along. I've got a uh, support out there just to help me hold the board up so I'm not having to fight the weight of it. And uh, I've got a 3 8 an inch Forstner bit that we're going to drill a counterboard hole. 
uh, about a quarter inch deep and that will let me sink this head down below the surface So now we're going to drill our through hole and I'm using a 1364 uh, drill bit to drill through there and we go right through and I can just pass it right through and the head goes below the surface. If I wanted, I could put a little plug there to hide the screw, but... The next step is uh, we're going to put a decorative edge on the face of all of our boards. So I'm just going to do the two ends first using a miter gauge and a feather board on the anchor table. You can do this with a handheld router as well, uh, but I like using the table. <laughs> got everything set up here to make a long cut. Uh, I got three feather boards just to keep everything against the fence. Another feather board to hold the piece down onto the table. That way uh, because I'm handling such a long piece I can uh, know that everything's going to be held in place and, and I don't spoil the cut. <laughs> bench hook set up here for my pull saw and I've got a stop block screwed down just to hold it and this is set at six inches and we just want to this way we don't take very much for the kerf and we end up with a nice six inch piece and they're all going to be exactly six inches when I'm finished and it just makes really quick work of this so the next step after we've cut our dowels to length is I want to round them all over on one end and how I'm going to do that is I've got a one inch uh, round over bit in my router table here with a fence set up and a feather board to help trap it and then you're just going to gently spin it as it's in, going into the cutter until you hit the bearing and then you're finished you'll end up with a nice rounded over head and uh, I've got the bit, uh, the speed on the router set about middle, middle of the way. You can slow it down all the way to the end. You'll get less burning that way, but it just takes a little longer to cut. got the finish on and I went ahead and finished it before I put the pegs in so 
All we need to do is just take a little bit of glue, put in each hole. You don't need a ton of glue, just enough to bond it. Just like this. Make sure you don't have any on the outer edge. Pick a peg, whatever peg you like. Now by me driving these into this board, this part of the peg has not had any finish on it. So I can just take it and you just tap it in until you, until you've got nothing nothing left and you just move right on. So it's a quick process now and the plus is if I do get any glue on the outside it's not going to stick to the polyurethane finish so I can just wipe it off and uh, I'll have a nice clean transition here. So I'll grab one of these here, take it and just Oh, everything's finished. The glue is dry. Uh, turned out really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. So the last step is we need to install it at the studio. So we've got our first one mounted on the wall. So we've got a reference. And uh, you don't have to watch me try and balance it and everything else. The only other thing we need to do is to take a level, put on one of the runs, hold this piece up, and get them level. So once we've done that, we mark our holes and we drill them out. And that's pretty much it. So we want to make sure it's level this way and then we'll check it for plumb. Once we get a screw in at the top, we'll just uh, get it plumb and then uh, put the other two screws in. So I just took my board, got it level, took a nail punch, put it through the hole and then I marked the drywall right here. And there's my mark. Now I'm just going to take a uh, drill and drill a hole and I'm just going to put a vacuum under it to catch some of the uh, debris. Alright, so our half inch hole is finished. Now all we have to do is take our little toggler here, it goes into the hole and then you turn it flat like this and it catches on the back of the drywall and then there's this little plastic piece that we zip tie down till it uh, hits the drywall on the front and then you've captured this threaded portion and you can take your bolt in and out. So we're going to go ahead and push this in. Wiggle it until it goes in. Now you're just going to hold it like this. You hear that zip tie working. Get it as tight as you can into the hole that you can. You pull as hard as you can. And now that it's tight, you just take it, snap those pieces off, and you're finished. That's it. That's how great it work. The other cool thing is now I can run a bolt in here. I want to take it down and paint. I could take the bolt out and I still have my threaded portion waiting for after I'm finished painting to put my art or whatever back up, my shelf, whatever it is. Now all I have to do is, I'll do my best so that you can see, is just take my piece here now because I already know that it's level, put my bolt in, get it started. Once my bolt started, I can take my gun and zip it in. And now that's going to hang there. I'll check it for level again. Perfectly level, so that's great. Now we're just going to take and turn it our level sideways and make sure that it's plumb straight up and down. process I'm just using a nail set you can use a pencil just gonna stick that in there 
And now you've got your hole marked. Now that this bolt up here is holding it, I can just gently move this over, drill my half inch hole at the top and at the bottom, run another set of togglers in there, and then I'm finished. So I must sponsor my toggler, I just find they work really well. I've got them on my ballet bars, and they have, I have ladies here hanging on them constantly, and they've never failed. So I don't think they'll have a problem holding up some yoga mats. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. As you can see, it turned out really nice. I'm very happy with it. Got some yoga mats on here to show you. But it holds them very nicely. Uh, if you have a really large yoga mat, you may wanna change the dimensions that I provided to accommodate for that. But if you got something out of this video, please hit that like button. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you a subscriber. And until the next time, I see you in the backyard.